Good evening, everybody. It is 9.56 here in Florida, and I just wanted to share something with you. Um, Amanda mirrored my Broken Lambs video on her channel, and I went over to check out the comments um, because I know that there's a lot of persecution going on in the church as far as, you know, grace and... Uh, that grace is being taught. Um, when it is being taught, a lot of times it's being taken out of context um, and um, it is sorely misunderstood. Um, but I wanted to share something with you. Um, I came across, he sounds like a young man. I cannot be sure if he's a young man or not, but he sounds like he's a young man. And he said on her channel, he said, um, if you feel you know, led to share my video, uh, please go right ahead. Well, I went and listened, and uh, um, I think it's just beautiful. This young man, his the name of his um, channel is Steve O, and he only has one video on it, and the one that he is on, has on it is enough. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. Um, the only way into heaven, you guys, is through the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the only way. Now, when we receive him and we, we understand that we are loved, and I, I ask that you guys watch this to the end because there are some beautiful nuggets in it, and um, we teach the same. Uh, well, I'll say I teach the same as this video teaches. I go into a lot more depth in some things, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. Uh, but, um, you know, love, love casts out fear. And when we accept Jesus as our Savior and we realize how much we are loved by him, and through faith, and I don't say that lightly, I'm saying it, uh, when you really, 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 really start believing that Jesus is real, and that heaven is real, and that all of it is true, the word is truth, well, that starts producing love. And um, and I mean a selfless kind of love, you guys, towards God and towards man. And if you're walking in that kind of love and, you know, well, you're not sinning. Because you're taking into account what makes other people happy. What is making God happy. And you're doing it because you feel so loved. And you know that there is an eternal life that is waiting for you. And you know, not believe, but of course belief is there. But, I mean, you know. You get to the point where you know that you know that you know. And that is what produces selfless love. You know, we're living in a, um, a world full of selfishness, full of selfies, um, pride, you know, all those kinds of things that, I mean, the glorification of the flesh. Um, and it's a shame because if they only knew Christ, if they only knew Christ, and I'll just leave it right there. I'm going to go ahead and play this because he did a beautiful job on this, you guys. Um, this young man, uh, I believe he's talking from his heart. And he's very intelligent. And it's scriptural what he's saying. So like I said, please listen to the end because there's some beautiful nuggets all the way through. Here we go.
Hi, my name is Steve-O, and the title of my video is How Can I Be Saved? And What Did Jesus Do at the Cross? If you, for any reason, are unsure if you're truly saved, you need to watch this video. This could be one of the most important things that you ever watch. Many people say things like Jesus loves you or Jesus saves, but what does that mean? I want to explain that to you right now. So I've put a piece of string on the screen. Imagine that this string represents time. Here at the start, this is the beginning of time. This knot is the time when Jesus died on the cross. Your life is somewhere here. And this represents the end of time. So in the beginning, God created human beings. Their relationship with him was perfect. They were given every single thing in creation to enjoy. But God said, do not do one thing or you will lose your perfect relationship with me. So imagine that humans have been created and they have absolute lack for anything. They have a perfect relationship with God. And God is righteous and he does not want to control us. It's the righteous thing to give humankind a choice to commune with God or the choice to reject him because God does not force us to love him. So he basically says you can have absolutely everything, but don't push the red button. Don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you push the red button, you effectively choose to reject me. So what do they do? They push the red button. Instantly, man is separated from God. They have now lost their perfect relationship with him. And God himself gave him himself on a silver platter. And they screwed it up. Man and God are no longer together. So this is love. Despite man rejecting God, he gives them another chance. He says, okay, you've rejected me. But I'm now going to give you every tool that you need to come back to me. He now gives them laws and rules and regulations. So if we can fulfill them, we can have our relationship with God back. So for the next 4,000 years, mankind tries to uh, completely fulfill these laws, the Ten Commandments that are required of God. They try and they fail over and over. They try and they fail over and over again get so bad that mankind is given the choice to sacrifice an unblemished, genetically pure animal once a year to cover over all the sins that they committed over that year. They inevitably sin over the next year and another animal is sacrificed, and the next year another animal is sacrificed, and the next, and the next, and the next. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. So in other words, someone must die to pay for the sins of mankind, but this is mercy. God required that we sacrifice a lamb. He could have chosen to sacrifice a person like you or me, but he chose a lamb because he loves us despite our rejection of him. Again, this continues over the next 4,000 years, and God sees that we simply cannot do it. There is none righteous, no, not one. All of our attempts to fail uh, at righteousness fail miserably, and we fall short. Nobody can do it, and we all fail. So this is love, and the love story that is the Bible. After 4,000 years, God sees us falling over and over again, and he makes a decision. He says, you cannot fulfill my requirements to come back to me, so I myself will fulfill those requirements for you. God comes to earth and becomes a human. He takes human form. Jesus Christ is the God-man. He comes to earth, he lives a perfect and sinless life, he does not make a mistake one time. He becomes the sinless sacrifice for our sins on the cross. So every piece of punishment that he endured, every stroke of the whip, the crown of thorns being pressed in his skull, his beard being torn out, his hands, his feet, and his side being pierced, and being hung on the cross, Every one of these afflictions was because he loves you. And they were required in order to fulfill this perfect law that God gave us and that we could not fulfill ourselves. God himself came to earth in the form of a man, Jesus Christ, which means anointed Savior. And he became that sacrificial lamb for you and me. 
Now instead of the sacrifice of an animal that lasts only one year, the sacrifice of the God-man covers the sins of your entire life, past, present, and future. So not only did Jesus die, he was dead for three days. During that time, he descended to hell and he preached to those in captivity, those who in years past tried and failed over and over and over again and could not reach God. In doing this, he conquered death, hell, and the grave. And at the end of the three and a half days, he resurrected from the dead to prove his victory and complete our purchase. He then ascended to heaven and he will return to earth again very soon to collect us who believe in him who is who are his bride so to recap there are two ways to be saved and to have a deep relationship with god again and to be in heaven after your life ends number one live a perfect life your entire life and do not sin one time if you can do this congratulations because i can't in fact nobody can we are all flawed. Here's the good news. Number two, this is the second way to be saved. And it's quite simple, A, B, C. A is admit that you have sinned, ask for Jesus' sacrifice, and accept it as your own. B, believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and paid the punishment for your sins forever. C is confess with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord. Looking at Jesus' sacrifice, anyone will realize that it is a bad deal to God. He takes all of your sin in exchange for all of his righteousness. But that's love. Anyone who's in love will do crazy things that don't make sense. That's why the Bible says God is love. This is grace, blessings and favor that we don't even come close to deserving. And this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he first loved us. So now you receive all of God's righteousness, and with his blood he buys you. And now owns all of your sins, all of your mistakes, your unworthiness, your sickness, your lack. You now realize that God has just literally given himself in an extremely bad deal to buy you. So now, what do you do? You decide that because God's pretty much been ripped off, you want to give him everything in return. You feel so loved that you want to go and love everybody, even those who are unlovable, those who are rejected by the world, and those maybe who have even hurt you. You can do this because you have right standing with God. And you don't want to take further advantage of him. You want to share Jesus with everybody. And you actually come to a place where you realize you don't want to sin. You learn that in light of God's love, you hate sin. And this is holiness. Not that we obey God out of fear that he will punish you. But rather we give our everything for God. Because we realize that he gave his everything for us. When we rejected him and we weren't even worthy. He has made us the righteousness of God through Christ. We want to act like pure love and pure righteousness because we are completely in love with God once again. If you are listening to this and you can feel God all around you, maybe your heart is pounding or you can feel warm uh, sensations, this is God calling you. He's telling you to accept his son as your sacrifice. And he knows that you can't do it on your own. So I encourage you, say this prayer with me right now and accept Jesus. I will say a line, and you repeat each line after I say it. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I am a sinner. I acknowledge that I need you, that I cannot live a perfect life, and I cannot save myself. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for purchasing my life with the blood that you spilled. Thank you for conquering death, hell, and the grave, and rising from the dead. I accept your sacrifice. Come into my heart and become Lord of my life. From this day forward, I am born again. My life belongs to you. And I will be with you forever from this day forth, even after I die. I receive your Holy Spirit now. And my name is now written in the book of life. 
Angels in heaven are rejoicing right now because I was lost and now I am found. I am saved by your grace. I am now perfect in God's eyes because I have Jesus' perfection. You have forgiven me of all of my sins, past, present, and future, and I have right standing with you forever. Nobody can take that away from me. Amen. I believe in you, and I love you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. So, if you've now prayed this prayer, you are saved. And you're, how they say, born again. You need to be fed like a newborn. So get yourself a Bible or a Bible app and start reading. Start in the book of John. This is in the New Testament, a little bit past halfway through. John talks about Jesus' life on earth, how he came to save, how he was rejected ultimately by mankind, and how he died on the cross. And despite our rejection of him, he saves us anyway. The next book, after John, Acts, describes the history of the early church and talks about the Apostle Paul, who was given the New Covenant, the Gospel of Grace, for us non-Jewish believers. And Acts also talks about Peter, John, and James, and the other disciples, who were sent to save those in Israel who rejected Jesus as their Savior and Messiah. After John and Acts, read Romans, then 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, and so on until you reach Revelation, the last book of the Bible. At that point, you can start over in the New Testament again. Uh, start in Matthew, or if you feel comfortable, you can read the Old Testament. The Old Testament is cool because it's a mystery, and Jesus is scattered all through the Old Testament as the one who will come and save I read the Old Testament so I can look for Jesus, Amen. and it Amen. is literally mind-blowing. Mm. So the Bible starts with the Old Testament and the story of the beginning, followed by all of the in-depth laws God gave man and the continual failures of man to keep these laws and to be perfect. So Jesus said that men's hearts are like soil. There is good soil that accepts a seed and waters it with the water of the word of God, which is the Bible. There is rocky soil that cannot accept the seed. There is seed that is stolen by the birds of the air, which represents those who hear the word of God, but the cares of this world and the devil try to steal from them. Uh, those seeds are choked up by weeds or stolen by birds of the air. So the key for you now now that you've accepted Jesus, is allow the seed that you've received today to grow. Amen. How do you water and grow a plant? It's through pure water and exposure to the sun. In other words, keep Jesus the sun and let him shine all over you and water yourself with the word by reading the Bible at least once a day. I recommend in the morning before your day or at nighttime before bed. As you read the Bible, you will find that you will grow an understanding of who Jesus is. You will find that you develop spiritual gifts Amen. like prophecy, gifts of healing, evangelism, or words of knowledge. You will start to have dreams and visions of God and Jesus, and you will learn to hear his voice. And he will speak to you throughout the day or at night while you're asleep. Amen. So, thanks for listening. What are you waiting for? Go and devour the word of God. God bless you. Jesus loves you. And Jesus saves. Amen. That was just beautiful. Um, I just want to put a couple things here with this. Um, you know, we are sealed to the day of redemption. When you receive Jesus as your Savior, you confess him with your mouth and you believe in your heart. You say that prayer any way that you, you know, feel fit in your own heart to say it. Um, within those logistics, you see what I'm saying? That you're a sinner. That you are thankful to the Lord for giving his life for you. God himself came down off his throne and died in your stead. And took your punishment um, of sin. And, you know, just... Once you get a measure of faith, 
Um, you'll feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit come upon you when you feel that. And that's belief, that's faith. When you start feeling that, that conviction, you need to go ahead and get off the fence and say that prayer. We do not have much time. Uh, we need to do it like very, very soon, you guys. Like now is the time. Go into your room or outside, anywhere you have some kind of privacy, um, and say say the prayer. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, um, and He will come in. The Holy Spirit will come in, and He will start changing you. And like this young man says, that you will, you know, the Holy Spirit will start working on you, and then you need to be um, washed by the Word of God and stay in the Word as much as possible. Uh, to pr produce all the fruits and the love to learn about God even more so so that you start producing more like he said your giftings your fruits um, you know all the things that uh, take us and um, guide us and lead us into doing his will for our lives so I hope this has been a blessing to you. It is a blessing to me. Uh, he set it out beautifully. He really did, you guys. Um, I appreciate that, and I appreciate you, Steve. Uh, God bless you. That was beautiful. Uh, you guys have a blessed night, and uh, please spread the word. Spread the gospel. Jesus loves us, you guys, more than we can ever imagine. And that's what it's all about, is loving Him, Him loving us, and us loving each other. On all that, nothing, nothing, none of the laws are against, okay? It's about love. It's about selflessness. So anyways, and when you, and when you I'm sorry, but when you start really getting that faith that's when you really start getting that selflessness okay just stay in the word stay washed amen and amen